Repair of a large posterior left ventricular pseudoaneurysm involving the mitral apparatus. A 62-year-old female presented to our institution with heart failure symptoms with a strange history of transient neurologic events. On deeper investigation, she was found to have an untreated myocardial infarction four years prior that had resulted in a large left ventricular pseudoaneurysm. Transthoracic echocardiogram demonstrated a large posterior basal left ventricular pseudoaneurysm and an estimated left ventricular ejection fraction less than 35%. There was no mitral regurgitation. On CT reformatted images, we can see the left ventricular pseudoaneurysm involving the posterior basal wall with a broad neck at the level of the mitral annulus. The pseudoaneurysm is large, approximately 8 by 5 centimeters, and filled with thrombus and calcifications. Left heart cath demonstrated an occluded right coronary artery filling with left to right collaterals. This is likely the culprit lesion which led to the left ventricular pseudoaneurysm. The left sided system was significant for mild diffuse disease involving the LED and circumflex. Following median sternotomy, cardiopulmonary bypass was initiated with aortic and bicable cannulation. Care was taken not to manipulate the heart prior to aortic cross clamping to avoid dislodging any LV thrombus. The aorta was clamped and the heart was arrested with anagrade cardioplegia. The cavity were snared and the right atrium opened. A vent was placed across the atrial septum for drainage and a cardioplegia cannula was secured in the coronary sinus. Adhesions between the left ventricular pseudoaneurysm and the diaphragmatic surface of the pericardium were taken down and the heart was retracted to expose the pseudoaneurysm. A longitudinal incision was made over the pseudoaneurysm parallel to the posterior descending artery. Stay sutures were used to retract the pseudoaneurysm walls to expose the LV cavity. A large amount of LV thrombus was extracted, and the LV was irrigated copiously with normal saline. We examined the mitral annulus through the LV pseudoaneurysm and constructed a patch repair that would not alter the geometry of the mitral annulus to, to induce new mitral regurgitation. A ruler was used to measure the base of the patch at approximately six to seven centimeters. A triangular Dacron patch was fashioned and anchored to the fibrous scarred myocardium and to the posterior mitral annulus. Again, it's important to note that care was taken not to disrupt the geometry of the subvalvular apparatus of the mitral valve to avoid mitral valve dysfunction after the repair. The suture was passed through the mitral annulus and the patch parachuted into place. And using a running technique, the patch was secured along the posterior annulus and the LV wall. The other end of the suture was used to continue running the patch, closing the defect in the left ventricular wall. Again, care taken not to disrupt the chordae or subvalvular uh, mitral ap apparatus.
the patch was trimmed and tied into place after filling the LV cavity with saline to de-air. The heart was filled and repair sutures were placed to, to ensure hemostasis. The aortic cross clamp was removed and epicardial ventricular pacing wires were placed and the right atrium closed. The LV was closed over the patch using two parallel Teflon strips, a felt, and a large MH proline needle. The patient was easily weaned off cardiopulmonary bypass. Post repair intraoperative transesophageal echocardiography demonstrated. Reduction in this LV cavity size, no new mitral regurgitation, with a modest improvement in LV function. The patient's postoperative course was notable for complete heart block requiring a pacemaker. She was discharged home 16 days following surgery. At most recent follow-up, her heart failure symptoms are much improved with ongoing titration of guideline-directed medical therapy. Follow-up imaging showed an intact repair with reduction in LV dimension. She has not experienced any more embolic events. Thank you for your attention.